Now, in this particular thing, with, we start out with bars. Uh, uh, he, two, two different type bars are used here. As you know, the lake can be all full of bars, all kinds of bars. There's some long, some short, some steep, some shallow running, and they're located all over the lake. And one lake lot will have one, and one bar, and another lake lot will have two or three hundred if it's thick enough. So let's talk about, you want to talk about, we're going to look at this first one, then we're going to come down to this one and see the difference and see the importance of this. We'll put two type bars on this same slide. This is the one that we're going to talk about first. And now this, again, is self-explanatory. What I'm going to do in this case is to just show you some samples of bars so that they sure they understand what a bar looks like. Now this is one that extends from the shoreline. This is the other bar that he represented on that thing. You can, when you talk about those bars, you can, uh, like these here, you can just yak yak up a storm on the different type bars that they're situated with. Sometimes these things uh, in, in lakes will be represented by the way that the, uh, the, the weed line comes out. In other words, you go along the shoreline and there'll be a weed line to show you, well, there's a, there's a point coming out because the weed line comes way out in the lake in the form of a point. In this case, it's a brush sitting there. This long one is where the channel swings in close to the shoreline. This is important for several reasons. The first reason that you'll point out to the fact that uh, as the fish move and make contact, at, say at this point, and move up along this break line, they have immediate access to deep water. They don't have to come way up here and go all the way back down here. So this makes it this bar, as they move on this bar, they have a m immediate access to deep water, which is a very important thing to consider. This is a low water stage here, and I might say in here that a little later on we're going to have a, a tape for you that shows high water and low water, uh, but this is a low water scene where the, where the channel swings in close to the shoreline, and you see these different bars down through here as the, as the channel swings in close to the shoreline. This is one that swings in close to this deep shore, this over here. It, in this case, it's coming down here and moving right in against that steep shore over here. This is the one that in a wide floodplain. This is a slide that I use when talking about a wide floodplain. And one of the most important features in a wide floodplain type lake, and this is a flatlander, or a wide floodplain, that's because you got these big, big flats, very big old flats over here. And here's the, here's the channel. Here's the flats and big flats here, and where this channel swings in close to this shoreline is in a, in a flatlander, and say you're looking at a, at a map, a contour map, or just a, a topo map of a, of, a, of a flatlander or a wide flood plain. A wide flood plain is uh, what I call wide flood plain is major rivers. And a lot of times this is uh, very wide, and it's a great big flat, and it's, as the channel comes up through here, and there's nothing to get across here to this feature here. Very important. And so, but you take your map, if you're looking at a map and you want to mark the spots on your map that you're going to check out, then what you do, you circle this area where it swings in close to the shoreline. This is one of the major spots. Maybe in a wide flood plain thing type thing, you wouldn't have more than four or five different structure situations in the whole lake. And it may be 100 miles long. But this is one of them too. So you have to be and understand that quite often, this is a real key to Flatlander, right there. This is a slide of wash. Now this is important that a lot of people uh, don't understand these and a lot of times they're lost. Here's a slide and as it slid in and broke off or it was a wash that came down across the hill and hit, came into the lake 
It didn't cut a channel. It just made this thing and made a bar. So this slide or wash is very important as far as the structure situation is concerned. There's the way that I put it. And maybe they can see it just a little bit better by doing it this way. This is a, a slide or it could be a wash, but it looked like a, a slide and it came off the hill here and it slid in through here and may be caught by wet weather, but a bar was formed right here. Here's a wash. Now you're going down the shoreline and you see this little, little hill right here and here's a, a, a cave in or a wash. It's a slide. You better go and check that thing right there because that's a bar. And a lot of people uh, misinterpret that. They even pass this up and this could be some of the best structure situations that you run into as far as a bar is concerned. I could put a, I, uh, let me go back there, I could put in all different kinds of slides and, and washes and things, but those are some of the things that, that you have to watch for. I put them in the same category with the bars, the slides and the washes. Here's a wash, let's say for instance, there's a bar here. Here's a slide, cave in, there's a bar here. Two very important ones. And there's a little cold goes back in there, so this would be very, very important. This is a saddle. And you're looking at it, uh, you have a sanctuary depth. You have to have a sanctuary depth. A lot of times the fish will move from another area and come in on the, this uh, saddle down in this section of the water. But uh, it, uh, it, uh, a lot of times the sanctuary depth isn't here and the fish have to make contact somewhere else and move to this saddle. But you cannot pass these things up. There's a bar and here's a bar. You can, uh, so you, important thing that I talked about the, in the last January was the, the seeing the structure situations by looking at the shoreline, trying to, to above water observations to show you what is underneath the water. It's something that I'll continue to hammer away because a lot of people depend upon the depth sounders and things like this and they're, they're, off, they're off the beam most of the time. The, the depth sounder has to be an A. And so you have to know something about what, the, what you see above the water as to what exists below the water. And so these are the features that you're looking for above the water. This is the low water stage, but if you were looking at the high water stage way up here and way up here, and you saw this thing down in here, you would say that there's got to be a saddle between this thing and this thing right here. You could see that little saddle in here. You can contact here, come here, maybe up here, and go there. But they may, that's go, kind of going back to backside. But let's say that what it is here is the water level is up here. See? And so that gives you an idea of what that, what that, there's a saddle in there. So it, this will water stage, so that be perfect. And I would say that's a saddle rather than it, 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 at a certain water levels. This is uh, another, you see lots of these. Uh, and uh, where you, you have going off where you can see here and here. A lot of times you have weeds in the water, weeds in the water here. And then over here, weeds in the water over here. That's here and you just kind of figure and look at that. And the observation is that the saddle between this shoreline and that shoreline right there. So you better check it out. It may, it may be so shallow that you may not even go through there with the boat, but it may be deep enough that a little channel come right through there and make the perfect saddle. The island. Different types of uh, lakes and reservoirs will have different types of islands. Uh, 
but they are something that you know that it's something different when you look out across this this thing and there may be a channel on this side you've got to figure that is maybe a channel but especially you've got to be figuring that whatever your island you're looking at is got to be a bar somewhere on that particular island sticking up now in this case I is where I have a, a split channel channel here and a channel here in a lot of reservoirs it'll be just exactly like this this is one that uh, shows you what I'm talking about where the channel will kind of split and go down one side and down the other it'll be a short bar here on the upper side the streams going this way short bar here and a long bar down here you can usually have to figure on a situation such as this that maybe this is the way it is if you see this and if you see this and out here I would go check that rascal there's a channel that looks like going down through yonder across there and I know there's one of deep water on this side and there's deep water on this side and if I saw that situation I'd say well by cracky, I better check these around this thing. And I also put a run across here because there's another I don't know there, and there may be a saddle right here. I'd check that. But those are structure situations. You come over here and you look at this, you'd pass that right on up. There's nothing here. There's not a structure situation for it. That little thing doesn't mean anything. Reefs. This is very important in big lakes especially in uh, in uh, natural lakes and uh, great lakes like the, like the Great Lakes uh, Lake Erie or some of the the five great lakes but there's a lot of lakes that for the the reefs and rocky reefs are very important as far as structure situation is concerned You could talk about this if you want to. It's usually the mud flat on this side, the mud flat on this side, and you got this rocky reef going out through here, and it wouldn't be traveling across that mud and rock and sand. This is just like a bar. This gives you a path all the way across there. That's a structure situation that you have to do. Now, I might go back and say that you should think, and you read it, that most of the time, the basic structure situation you're on, there might be some that, uh, belong to the same family but uh, you will never run more than 16 or 6, 15 or 16 or 17 uh, structure situations. I don't care how long you live or how many different waters you fish but this is one of them one of them and most lakes don't have them all some of the huge huge reservoirs man-made may ha contain all 17 in one way or the other but a lot of natural lakes don't This is a reef going out, and if you see that along the shoreline, you better check it, because you see the rocks up here. You better check that thing and see if it's a reef there. There's a low water stage, and you saw the little rocks up here. When the lake was full, look at that reef going on down through the under. When the water's up here, way up here, and may this, this end, this channel is come right on up here, be against the end of that thing and the wa water here and you got that right coming right on up here it come right up this brake line right there we're talking about reefs wide sweeping bar this is uh this is uh, more in in a natural lake, this is a major structure situation you run into in natural lakes. You, and a lot of times this will be, uh, you, you say, well, how am I gonna find this big rascal in a, in a, and by looking at the shoreline? Well, in most cases, you can look at the shoreline and there it is. It's an uneven bar. If you look around there, they go all the way around here and you see that big old bar. It's gonna be your contact, uh, uh, your job to, to you, to fish it and see where the contact point or where you got a great big flat out here in front of that weed bed. But you see it's, a, it's most likely you got a great big wide bar and you're gonna have to find a contact point. 
in and that's in a natural lake a lot of them. a lot of things you have these in a natural lake too uh, I had a little problem getting some of the slides that I want to do on account of being rain so bad and the lakes are flooded I couldn't get out and get all the slides that I wanted but this will tell you that when this water is over this thing that this is a great big wide bar that goes out in through there bar between two channels. Now it's, uh, with lakes within itself in a natural lake. You have natural lakes with a, with a stream going through it. You may have some, some of these situations here where the channel is an island or something where it's split in uh, a natural lake. But most of the time, in large fiscal reservoirs, here's two very important structure situations that you've got to check it out. And that this right here is a, is a bar between two channels. This here is in a main major stream. That's a major stream. You've got a major channel here and a major channel here. This is back in a cove. Most all of them, when you see a cove in a, in a, in a reservoir, you better get and go back and check and see if you that branch here and branch here and you got a bar in the center. That is a structure situation that has to be checked out. This is a pretty good shot right here uh, because it's going to show you two things. Here is the bar between this channel and this channel right here. If you look across here, here's a, here's a going back into a cove. You see one little get the bar right here in the center and it goes this way and then it goes up this way up the hill. That took me, a, it took Jerry a long time to find that, that situation for you. This is another situation that, that shows you the bar between two streams. You, anytime you see that, you've got to go down there and check this. And this is a wide bar, too, wide sweeping bar. But probably it, it has fingers on it out there that you'd have to check out and see where the contact point is. Same thing here. you got it down here and here, here. And this is more back in a cove. But you'd have to check this thing out. And if you look at it carefully, you, go, you don't know what's down here. But you most likely it's going to be a thing with some fingers on it, and out here toward the end it's going to be kind of maybe put, come to a point. This is back in a great big cove. You can see it's back in a cove because there's a root bed there. This gives you two. In this case, you've got a good structure situation right here and one right here. We'll talk about that in a minute. Now these are side feed of stream cuts. In, in what I, what I did, uh, you'll find some of these in, in natural lakes with a, uh, where the uh, has a stream flowing through. But normally you, you, you're looking at this more from a, from a, from a reservoir or a man-made reservoir, but some rivers will have these things. Most all your big rivers are going to have some five, side feed stream cuts. If you go down and, 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 and work the big coastal areas, they back in uh, the big bays in salt water, you're going to find that the hot spots in that whole big bay are going to be the side feed stream cuts. So they're very important. I don't care where you're fishing, uh, whether it's a man lake lake or, or, uh, uh, or coastal salt water bay or, or back in the stream or, or uh, natural lake. These are side feed stream cuts. They are one of the most important features that you have in, in, in most all reservoirs. This is your real key right here. Now I drew had it to draw all three of them. Now what to do is you you have to talk about all these structure situations so a little later I'll, I'll, I'll show you what I'm going to send you for this. Now, it's been better with the information that I'm going to send you about talking about this, this thing right here and about this thing and about this thing right here 
that I'm going to talk about this one first right here, where you have a side feed stream cut, which cut a little channel down here and entered the, the reservoir. Here's uh, this one up here is short bars that uh, channel deep waters here real close and it comes in here and bingo, bingo, close to the shore. Then this is one that combines these two that come down here and this will happen too. So you have to check those two corners. You have to check these two corners. So we wind up that your lava finds bang, 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 all the way through. So I'm gonna talk about this particular one first because that's the one that, uh, now this is a side feed stream cut that uh, cut down through here, and I'm not going to say what this is here. I'm not going to say that's a flat. It just came in here and it went down, and, 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 and you could say that it, it's a, just a gentle slope that went down and it came to the channel. It was a cut that went across here. This could have been full of trees. It could have been in most anything, but this, this particular thing went all the way. This is what I want you to notice in the very beginning, that this here, the sud feed stream cut has to go all the way to sanctuary depths. That's the reason I want you to have this full. That, that's the reason I used that one first. This was here. It went here and it went all the way, I guarantee it, to this deep water. That's your basis that has to go from this wash and this sud feed stream cut has to go and it went all the way. This, if you got out there to where it went all the way, you'd see the two bars where it got, where it came in here and went all the way. Here, it went all the way. And if you, it, it, you, you, you wouldn't, this, this is no good because that is not, that's a little brake line down through there, but it, there's no structure, you, you could run that. That's trolling water, you just keep going. You up here, trolling water, and you come to here, you better get busy and fish this because the contact point here, you, right there, just points out the migration route of the fish. Now this is another one I took from, uh, from our uh, flatlander or what I call a wide foot plane. Let me tell you about this because later on you may want, I may want to give you guys uh, the, the total wide foot plane because uh, this is uh, in teaching. You're going to probably be teaching people that live on, on uh, a situation such as the TVA system. The thing's over a thousand miles long, and it's wide floodplains. It's a, uh, you could say that it's flatter, but here is navigational water. They have buoys and things here. These would be marked in most cases. And there you go for, for, uh, for a thousand miles, all, all through parts of North Carolina, Tennessee, and down into Georgia and Alabama, and, and, and then across Kentucky. And to get to the Ohio River, you got about a thousand miles there. Now, if you went on the Missouri River, I don't know how many hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles you're going to have uh, with uh, these wide floodplain type reservoirs. So it's very important that you understand these things. So a little bit later, I'll send you uh, a, a slideshow showing the whole ball of wax on wide floodplains, a thousand miles. Each one of those lakes is the same cockeyed thing. And it's only about five or six structure situations in each one of them. In other words, just take a thousand miles and you only have about five different substructure situations in that distance. So you must understand this thing. And so this is one of the situations I have. There's the, here's your captain position. I'll show that because a lot of people want to cast out in here somewhere, and this is the, about the only place that I will allow you to cast into that channel, is the east bars at this day. It's a great big flat. The water could be all across all of that. This is uh, that short bar I was telling you about. This is a uh, 
a very difficult shot to get, believe it or not. Uh, I wanted to get a lower shot of this, but I, I just I just didn't couldn't do it because I couldn't find any low water. But that gives you an idea uh, that the, these two bars in here, close to the here, and this is the deep water, the channel out here. That this is a short bar because it could be long because it's not very far across there. Here is uh, one that uh, I'll use now. In, in, in this study, I may do a little bit different. In, in one of my trays, I may have a structure situation that looks like this. Then in another structure situation, I may use something a little bit different in, in the slide, but to prove. So the reason I'm pointing this out, whoever gets this particular slide will see that this is a short bar. You have to check up to see them. That, that, I don't know how far that thing goes. That thing may go back in there several miles, but it's still a short bar. You can see it, here it is. Here it is. And right here is the sanctuary depth right in here. So that means you have to check it out. This side feet are stream cut. It's so darn important and it's unbelievable. Now there's, uh, here's one of that steep shore, and here's a guy that's fishing that, 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 that bar right here. Is the, a, co a little cold back in here and a little cold back in here. He, he would check this one over here too. He's checking that one and he would check this one out here because of what it goes back in there. This is a uh, particular slide is uh, just to show you that uh, on those steep banks you're going to have to fish the one. Now let me back up here. You're going to have to fish here. And here, I didn't have a boat on this one, so I had to do this one to show you that you got to fish these steep banks where that, where that side feeder stream cut comes in, right here. There and here. Here, here. The channel, here. And there's the bar comes out here, bark there, and you can see this one here, and it's much to come right on out in here, no, right on out in here. There's a side feed stream cut right there. Now in this case, I showed you the, the uh, short bars and the long bars, and this is the combination of the two. So you've got to kind of, where you have a flatlander or anything, you just kind of have to figure that when you see the, the cove entrance, you, you got to check here and you got to check here for a bar. Then when you go out here and where that side feeder stream cut cuts through the flat or goes right on out to the main channel, the sanctuary depths out here, you've got to check here and here. I'll back up those two and you'll see what I mean. There's one. That's two, and that's what you see. Now, in that last slide, you see you have these bars, and these two right here, and these two right here. You gotta check here, and here, and here, and here. And there's your brake line going all the way.